We're only about halfway through, but I'd already venture to declare that 2025 is the year of the funnel web. In recent months, there's been some notable findings concerning these spiders. Atrax robustus, the most boring spider in the world, finally received some vaguely interesting coverage concerning its recent division into three separate species, including the so-called Newcastle Big Boy. Properly known as Atrax Christensenii, the Big Boy has been widely touted as the newfound titan of the funnel webs. Though in spite of the almost comical degree of hype it's received from the media and the internet at large, the Big Boy is ultimately quite an underwhelming and forgettable object that rather woefully fails to live up to just about any of the things it's famed for, being neither a new discovery per se, nor the biggest funnel web by any stretch. The publication that revised Atrax Robustus and sundered its identity into three received considerable and widespread publicity, mostly because of that Newcastle Big Boy. But since it's neither new nor especially big, perhaps its nickname could be whittled down to just Castle Boy. But the year's funnel web news doesn't end there, for in recent weeks another publication has come to light, one that you'd be forgiven for being completely unaware of, seeing as it received not the faintest iota of mainstream attention. Even I, as someone who is to a degree concerningly obsessed with spiders and eager to stay on top of the latest developments, remained oblivious for a time until mere chance eventually led me to it. And deprived of the spotlight as it may be, this new research is, in my opinion, considerably more noteworthy than what emerged prior. For not only does it catalogue yet another new species, it has implications that could rewrite the very basis of what funnel web spiders are. So without further ado, let's meet the new species, Hadronici simon Fernai, currently known only from the far northeastern corner of Tasmania. Prior to this species' recognition, only two funnel webs were known from Tasmania, Hadronici venenata and Hadronici pulvinata, the latter of which has never been seen since its initial description in the 1920s. The newly described Hadronici simon Fernai was named in honour of its discoverer Simon Fern, who was the first to recognise that this spider was a distinct species. Specimens of Hadronici simon Fernai had been collected prior, but they were misidentified as Hadronici venenata, which is much more common and familiar. By comparison, as noted by Fern, this species had substantially larger and more elongated mouth parts, or chelicerae, than its better known relative, and the recognition of this notable difference in turn set the stage for a deeper dive into the animal's anatomy, which revealed further disparities, providing ample grounds upon which Hadronici simon Fernai could be identified as a new species, separate from Hadronici venenata. A new species of funnel web is, of course, exciting news. Well, as exciting as anything involving funnel webs can possibly be, which isn't really saying much. But for anyone remotely aware of how much of a taxonomic mess these spiders are, the continual identification of new species shouldn't come as much of a surprise. And now let's move on to the second part of the study, the part that discusses the much broader matter of what funnel web spiders really are, and where they sit in the spider family tree. Funnel web spiders, like just about everything I've ever covered on this channel, living or extinct, have had a confusing history in terms of how they're classified. For a time, the Australian funnel webs formed a subfamily called the Atracinae, which was in turn part of the family Hexathilidae. That placement, however, later fell apart in 2018, when a study reclassified the Australian funnel webs as a family unto themselves, and not a subfamily within the Hexathilidae. The Atracidae, as these spiders were known thenceforth, were proposed to be most closely related to the Actinopodidae, or mouse spiders, and that is how things remained, potentially up until now, when this new research called this long-established classification into question. Now bear in mind, this research is still very novel, and its implications haven't been uptaken as the new standard immediately upon publication. As I record this narration right now, on Monday the 14th of July at 12.43 in the afternoon, Australian Eastern Standard Time, funnel webs remain classified as forming the family Atracidae, 
separate from the Hexathelidae and most closely related to the mouse spiders. Now that that disclaimer's been established, let's dive into the new study's positions, which notably includes some pointed criticisms of the 2018 revision. A key piece of evidence put forward to justify the idea that the mouse spiders were the funnel web's closest relatives was their respective venom compositions. Funnel web and mouse spider venom does appear to be quite similar. So similar indeed that funnel web antivenom can be used to treat mouse spider bites as well. And it was suggested that these parallels in venom composition reflected homology from recent shared ancestry. The 2018 revision that reclassified funnel webs as the mouse spider's next of kin included a comparative table of sampled peptides from the venom of six different spiders Atrax robustus, Illawarra wishartii, Hadronici versuta, and Hadronici infensa, all of which are Australian funnel webs, Michelina bradleyi, a type of mouse spider, and Macrothiale gigas, a huge Asian funnel web native to the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. The table certainly makes for a succinct, digestible means to convey the study's propositions. But as highlighted by this new revision, its validity as a source is hardly watertight, for the authors of the new research appear to be of the mind that it's beset with a suite of critical weaknesses, not least of which are its incompleteness and the very limited selection of species investigated. Furthermore, the central assumption that venom peptides accurately reflect the relationship between the featured spiders was not only deemed to be poorly supported, but had implications that would, if taken to their logical conclusion in the context of the study, be implausible to say the least. As highlighted by the new revision's authors, if one assumed, for argument's sake, that variation in the sampled venom peptides was indeed a reliable indicator of relationship, then it could be concluded from this figure that Hadronici versuta and Hadronici infensa, both of which are clearly, unequivocally funnel webs, would be of closer affinity to mouse spiders than to the other funnel web species featured, a conclusion that is absurdly inconsistent with what the spider's anatomy would indicate, and overall very unlikely to be accurate. On top of that, spider venom can be less than consistent. A surprising degree of variation can exist within a single species, and for that matter, within a given individual, with factors like age, time of year, and state of agitation potentially affecting the composition of a spider's venom. All things considered, analysis of a limited selection of venom peptides from a very limited selection of spiders could be a rather shaky foundation for drawing conclusions about taxonomy. The 2018 revision's similar decision to reclassify two other groups that were, like the Australian funnel webs previously considered part of the Hexathelidae, was also met with renewed scepticism. Another former subfamily of the Hexathelids, the Macrothelids, which includes some of the largest funnel webs in the world, was, like the Australian funnel webs, designated as a family of its own and no longer a subgroup of the Hexathelidae. However, the justification for this appears to have been rather flimsy in the eyes of the 2025 study's authors. The diagnostic traits that were referenced in the establishment of the Macrothelids as a distinct separate family were found to be both inconsistent within the group and not exclusive to the group either. It's a similar case for the New Zealand genus Porothile, supposedly the inspiration for the design of Shelob in the Lord of the Rings movies. Porothile was also formally classified as a member of the Hexathelidae, but following the 2018 publication was placed within its own family called the Porothilidae, separate from both the Macrothelids and the Hexathelids. But as was the case with the Macrothelids, the diagnosis for Porothilidae's placement within a separate family was deemed invalid. Thus, the new revision proposes that Porothilidae and the Macrothelids both be returned to their historical placements within the Hexathelidae. However, once again, it's worth reiterating that the mere publication of this research does not mean that it is now accepted as the new baseline for the spider's taxonomy. Currently, the classification established by the 2018 publication still stands as per the World Spider Catalog, with a majority of the catalog's board members voting that the new article's criticisms of the molecular evidence behind the 2018 study are insufficient. That being said, the first part of the article, the description of Hadronici simonferni as a new species, has been formally accepted. 
Even with all that said and done, the authors of this new study clearly weren't finished picking quarrels with other academics, and the article's final paragraphs provide a short, albeit justified dismissal, of another proposed revision to funnel web taxonomy. Among Australian funnel webs, the genus Hadronici is by far the most diverse, in terms of appearance, habitat, behaviour, and sheer species count. An article published in 2017 suggested that the genus Hadronici be split into four different genera. An interesting proposition indeed, but one that, upon scrutiny, reveals itself to bear all the signs of a hastily drawn conclusion, built upon what could at its most generous be described as the shakiest of foundations. The sundering of Hadronici into four was an idea based entirely off a major revision of Australian funnel webs published in 2010. In that study, the Hadronici species were divided into four groups, and the author of the 2017 article espoused the idea that these four subgroups could each be reclassified as separate genera. However, this ignored a rather important disclaimer in the 2010 study, in which the four species groups were quite explicitly stated to have been designated solely for convenience's sake and had no taxonomic basis. Thus, the wild card of a proposal to split Hadronici into four genera has been quite decisively rejected, and understandably so. And with that, this lengthy and hopefully not too confusing coverage of the latest taxonomic upheavals in funnel web land comes to a close. If you'd desire to learn about 2025's other major funnel web revision, that being the realisation that the famed Sydney funnel web was in fact three different spiders, then head over to this video here. And for another spider with confusing affinities, check out this video about the prehistoric Mongol arachne. Of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.